Hello, friends. I'm going to read this book to you today. Here's the title. The Man Who Walked Between the Towers by Mordecai Gersten. He's the author and the illustrator. I am reading this book because it is going to introduce a few things that we're going to talk about in the coming weeks. One thing that it introduces is this metal right here. You can see it says the Caldecott Metal. The Caldecott Medal, the gold medal, like this received, is given out once a year. And we will talk about it soon in the next few weeks. Um, when, the, when the 2021 winner is announced, it's usually at the end of January. So it is given for the best illustration of the year to one book. We'll talk more about that later. Another thing that this book introduces is a biography. Some of you know what a biography is. A biography is a book about a person's life, a real person. They can either still be living or they may have died, but it's a real person's life and it's the story of their life. This one does not look like a biography because most biographies have photographs of the real person in their life, different times in their life. This book has no photographs and there are a few that don't. This author just decided he would rather illustrate the book, but this is a true story. Another thing different about this is it doesn't tell the whole story of this person's life. It just gives us one segment of the life. But it is still a biography. And we're going to talk about biographies in the next several weeks. But this is an interesting story. And I wanted to introduce those two things to you through this book. The Man Who Walked Between the Towers. Now, before we start reading, the towers that it is talking about are the twin towers that were in New York City. Now, you remember, you have heard probably of 9-11. That was a tragedy when those towers were bombed and they fell down and they're not there anymore. So this story happened before those buildings got bombed. So this is an illustration of when they were being built. And this could challenge you to check more into 9-11. 9-11 stands for September the 11th. Okay, once there were two towers side by side. They were each a quarter of a mile high. 1,340 feet. The tallest buildings in New York City. Tallest buildings in New York City. A young man saw these rise into the sky. He was a street performer. He rode a unicycle. He juggled balls and fiery torches. But most of all, he loved to walk and dance on a rope he tied between two trees. So he was a tightrope walker. This says he was a street performer, but that's also uh, people in the circus do that. He looked not at the towers, but at the space between them and thought, what a wonderful place to stretch a rope, a wire on which to walk. Once the idea came to them, he knew he had to do it. If he saw three balls, he had to juggle. If he saw two towers, he had to walk. That's how he was. Hadn't he danced on a wire between the steeples of Notre Dame Cathedral above his amazed home city, Paris? Why not here, between these towers? 
So there's an illustration of him walking the tightrope between those two towers. Of course, he knew that, as in Paris, the police and the owners of the towers would never allow it. You must be crazy, they would say. You'll fall for sure. And so, Philippe, that was the young man's name, began a plan to do it secretly. The buildings are not quite finished, he thought. Maybe if I dressed as a construction worker early on an August evening, he and a friend entered the South Tower. They got a 440 pound reel of cable and other equipment into the elevator, took it to the unfinished top 10 floors and waited until nightfall, until everyone had gone. Then they carried everything up 180 stairs to the roof. At midnight on the other tower's roof, two more friends tied a thin, strong line to an arrow and shot it across to Philippe, who was 140 feet away. The arrow missed and landed on a ledge 15 feet below the roof. Bad luck, thought Philippe. He crawled down the ledge over the sparkling city and got the arrow. To his end of the stronger line, Philippe tied the cable to which he would walk. It was five-eighths of an inch thick. His friends pulled the cable over to their tower. So they had sent a rope over with the arrow, but they had held the end of that rope. Then Philippe tied another cable to it so then they could just pull their end to get that big cable back to their side. But it was so heavy that it slipped from Philippe's grip. The cable's middle plummeted toward the street. So this middle part fell down. As it fell, it pulled the friends on the other tower to the very edge. Philippe, just in time, secured his end. It took three hours to pull the cable back up. Frantically, as the stars faded, they tightened it between the towers. It was past dawn before they were ready. Dawn is when the sun comes up. Philippe put on his black shirt and tights. He picked up his 28-foot balancing pole. All his life, he had worked to be here to do this. As the rising sun lit up the towers, out he stepped onto the wire. I always like to find the picture it's on a cover in the book, and it shows us the other part of it, too. So here's a picture of him on the wire. 
Now this page opens up a little bit more. This is a really long page. It gives us a perspective of how high up he is. Out to the very middle he walked as if he were walking on the air itself. Most, uh, many winds whirled up from between the towers and he swayed with them. He could feel the towers breathing, but he was not afraid. He felt alone and happy and absolutely free. Now this page turns this way. Okay, this says, a woman coming from the subway might have been the first to see him. Look, someone walking on a wire between the towers. Everyone stopped and looked up. They gasped and stared. It was astonishing. It was terrifying. It was beautiful. A quarter of a mile up in the sky, someone was dancing. The police saw it too. Officers rushed to the roofs of the towers. You're under arrest, they shouted through bullhorns. Philippe turned and walked the other way. Who would come and get him? For almost an hour, back and forth, he walked, danced, ran, and knelt in a salute upon the wire. He even lay down to rest. The city and harbor spread beneath him. The sky surrounded him. Seagulls flew under and over. As long as he stayed on the wire, he was free. When he felt completely satisfied, he walked back to the roof and held out his wrists for handcuffs. So he did get arrested. They brought him to court. The judge sentenced him. Now this was his punishment for having done that. The judge sentenced him to perform in the park for the children of the city. And this he did happily. Though during his performance, some boys playing on his wire jerked it and he fell, but he caught himself. Look how he caught himself. With his foot. Now the towers are gone. But in memory, as if imprinted on the sky, the towers are still there. And part of that memory is that joyful morning, August the 7th, 1974, when Philippe Petit walked between them in the air. What did you think about that? I would like to know what you thought. Was that exciting to you? Was it scary? I don't really like heights, but you might like heights 